Welcome everyone to Keep Teaching with Confer Zoom. My name is Michelle Pekansky Brock and I am faculty mentor for online teaching and learning with CVC OEI, which also includes at one. And I'd like to welcome you here today on behalf of our whole team. We recognize that this has been quite an experience for many of you. Um, and we are in a system where we have a lot of people who have been teaching online for a long time and we have some others who all of a sudden are waking up to news that they have to take their courses online. So uh, we're very happy to share this session with you today to Thanks help to you uh, become familiar with ConferZoom if it is something new to you and give you some tips for uh, basically finishing your course in an effective manner using Confer Zoom. So, um, one second here. That looks a little bit better. Whoops. We do have the slides available for today's session and uh, one of my wonderful co-hosts, Autumn, will go ahead and, and, and share that in the chat for those of you who just joined. Um, there is a chat feature if you do want to have a back channel during the session. Um, I am appreciative of Helen and Autumn who will be helping me keep, keep their eyes on those um, messages in the chat. I also want to let you know a few things. Um, you are muted. Everybody will be on mute and we'll be muting people who come in late. And it's, it's really helpful if you can just keep your mic on mute during the session. Um, we do encourage you to enable your webcam if it's appropriate. It's nice to be able to see other faces in the room. Um, but of course, that's, that's, you use that at your discretion. We know that some folks just aren't really in a place where they should be sh sharing their webcam. And uh, we're going to be pausing for questions three times during the session today. It would be helpful if you could hold your questions until that time. We have a really big group. There are 175 people in the meeting right now. And so um, if we can hold the questions to that time, it might be more effective. And we're only going to be accepting questions via the chat for the first two Q&As. Then at the end, we'll give you the option to share with voice just so you can see how that works. I want to just say that I'm trying really hard to model some effective practices here for teaching. Um, so it might get a little messy. And I'm a learner. I've been using Zoom for a very long time, but there's a lot of features that I'm sharing with you here today that I haven't used a whole lot. So I want to be honest about that. And um, I think that if you're just getting started with any tool like Confer Zoom, when you start using it with your teachers, you too should be very candid and just let your students know that you're trying something new and you might make some mistakes. So what we're going to cover today, uh, we're going to have three sections uh, of this session. Uh, we're going to cover a pretty basic getting started section that will show you how to create an account, customize account settings, uh, and schedule meetings. And then we'll get into some of the basic features for teaching a session with Confer Zoom, including the difference between speaker and gallery views, chat, share a screen, and of course the recording feature. And then some of the advanced features for teaching, which if you're just getting started, you might not use them right away, but we certainly want you to know about them because these are some of the best ways to keep your session interactive. The first one is the whiteboard. There's a group annotation feature, uh, virtual background, which is just something fun that you can try out when we get into our uh, breakout room activity. There, there's the option to, to do polls and also breakout rooms. Um, so the breakout rooms we're going to actually uh, um, use at the end of the session and give you some time to get to know each other uh, and try out the, the, the uh, features a bit. So to get us started, I'm going to actually start by launching a poll. So this is a, one of the features that I mentioned in the advanced section. Um, now that you've seen the three different areas that we're going to focus on today, if you could click on the areas, you can click more than one. I want you to click on the areas that are most interest, uh, of most interest to you today, just to give us a sense of where you are at with your experience with ConferZoom.
Okay, about 75% of you have chimed in, which is great. We're now at 80%. And I'm gonna give you a five second countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And I'm gonna end the poll. And now I'm gonna click on my screen, a button that says share results. And so everybody can see what um, the results were. So, you know, there's interest across all different areas, but it looks like there's more of a focus on the basic features, um, but certainly enough interest in the other areas as well, which is really helpful for me to know as I uh, focus on the slides. Um, if all of you said you w just wanted the basic in advance, then I probably would have skipped through the, the getting started part, but that also looks like it's, it's important. So I'm going to close that poll out, and I do have a slide that shows you um, later how to use the polling feature. So we'll get to that soon. So first of all, and someone already asked this question upon joining today, what's the difference between Zoom and Confer Zoom? It sounds a little confusing, doesn't it? But it's really not that confusing. Um, oops, sorry about that. I need to stop touching my mouse. So Zoom is a public company that has a product that we're using right now. And it's an easy to use video web conferencing tool that includes a desktop application and a mobile app and has a lot of uh, wonderful interactive features. Confer Zoom is the statewide, it's basically the white label version of, of Zoom that we use here in the California Community College system. Um, as a faculty member of, of this system, you are very fortunate because you have access to a free upgraded pro account for Zoom. Now in our system, it's referred to as Confer Zoom. It's the, same pro it's the same product essentially. It's just that if you have a Confer Zoom account, it's a free upgraded version and you also have access to support from our Confer Zoom tool. I'm sorry, Confer Zoom uh, support staff. I also wanna point out that Confer Zoom is provided through CCC Tech Connect, which is funded by the California Chancellor's Office. Um, I am part of CVC OEI, and so Tech Connect, CVC OEI is another grant pro, uh, project funded by the Chancellor's Office. So we work together, but Tech Connect officially supports Confer Zoom. So you're going to see me refer to them a lot. Um, and I'm also wondering if we do have anyone from Confer Zoom who joined. I had a little bit of a, oh, there's Donna. Donna, I'm going to make you co host. Sorry, Donna, I know we had a little bit of a mix up there with our links. So I'm glad to see you there. I did give you co-host uh, permissions. So Donna Gustafson is here today and um, I, I'm gonna look to Donna as the expert for Confer Zoom. So uh, Donna, if at any time I say something that you'd like to clarify, if I get something a little murky, um, or if you think it's important to build upon something that I say, please feel free to um, unmute yourself. I will not take it personally, I promise. Okay, I promise to. I'm going to just jump in for one second because I was looking at the chat and I saw um, a question about do I need more than one account if I teach in different colleges and it, if unless I misinterpreted the response it was no, but uh, the response is yes, you need a separate confer Zoom account for each campus instance. So if you teach at three colleges, you're going to have three confer Zoom accounts because those emails for your college must match the email in Canvas. Could you all, oh, I'm sorry. Could you also just address uh, very quickly, some of the folks are saying that they've signed up, signed up for an account, but haven't been able to activate it. Um, I'm trying to see, I saw, when I sign into my Confer Zoom account, um, it doesn't allow me access. Um, there was another question. I, um, okay. Sure, I can address it. Um, oh yeah, it says I've been unable to activate my Confer Zoom account via Canvas. Okay, um, I can certainly address that. As you're all aware, the COVID virus has caused all kinds of new activities and requirements throughout the system. And we have an extremely high volume of requests coming from all 115 colleges or 114 colleges and faculty who have never been online through confer zoom requesting accounts we're working through the process as quickly as we can 
Um, so those who cannot sync their account to Canvas, their Canvas account to ConferZoom is simply because we have not completed the process or perhaps they didn't sign up for an account. Um, and anybody who has signed up for an account, we can just ask for great patience. We're getting to it as quickly as we can. But when we get emails that say, hey, I signed up, what happened? Well, how long is it gonna take? And the emails keep stacking from that one person. That just means that's a longer list for us to get through. So we ask if you sign up, just hold on tight. It might be a couple of days before we get to your account approval. And the best way that you will know is if you uh, look at your account and you see it's a licensed account and you make the attempt to sync from Canvas, you'll know that we're done. If you don't see the licensed account and you can't sync, you just kind of have to hold on. And we'll do the best we can because it's as um, challenging for all of you who have the pressure on to get online as it is um, to be sure you have those tools that you need. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm seeing lots of questions. I hope that they'll be addressed. I think I'm going to answer all the questions that I've seen so far in the chat, so hang in there. So in Zoom, there are two roles. There's a host, which is the role that an instructor would be in, um, and it's the user that scheduled the meeting. That user must be logged into one account, one's account prior to starting the meeting and also has access to meeting controls and, set, and settings. There are also there's also an attendee role, which is the role that your students are in. That's the role that you are in right now as attendees or participants in this session. These are the folks who are enjoyed, invited to join the meeting and does, this does not require a Zoom account. So just a moment ago, someone asked, do I have to have my students set up a free account? Do not have your students set up accounts. That's not needed. Um, and attendees can join from a computer or mobile device by clicking a link and they can also join any session by calling in from a phone if they need audio that way. And Michelle, uh, just to, again, if I can touch on the students do not need an account and please um, try and be as clear as you can with the students to not sign up, particularly at this time because we have been flooded with student requests. Mm -hmm. And again, that just stockpiles the queue. Um, we are going to get an update put on our website to say students do not need an account to try and support that, but your support is also welcomed. And in normal circumstances, they don't need account anyway, so. Great, that's a, that's a very helpful tip. So we love to confer Zoom in our system. It's used for statewide meetings, webinars for professional development like this one, and it's also been used for our online conferences like Can Innovate from CVC OEI and of course for teaching. Uh, if you're a member, if you are a CCC faculty or staff member to sign up, you simply go to conferzoom.org and you click on sign up. It's that simple. Complete the form using your college email address. As Donna mentioned a moment ago, if you're going to be using confer zoom with the canvas integration if you're doing that through canvas you do need to have an account for each of the of the the college emails that you do have if you're a faculty member who teaches at more than one college uh, you do need to also verify your account by clicking on a link in the automated email so be sure to look for that once your account is created uh, we recommend that you do a couple of things in your account by logging into zoom.us and signing into the account the first thing is on the profile tab, go ahead and uh, add a photo of yourself. It's a really nice way to humanize yourself in a Zoom meeting. If I were to go ahead and stop my video, it would toggle over from my webcam to the picture of me. And if you don't do that, then it just shows your, your name or your initials. So it's, it's just a nicer way to, to present yourself and to interact and relate with your students. Um, it's also helpful there to get familiar with your personal meeting ID, at least it's helpful for me. A personal meeting ID is a, is a quick way to start a meeting. Um, it's not a way that you can use Zoom to track attendance or anything like that. But um, for example, I'm not sure you can read this, but my personal meeting ID has a single um, digit sequence at the end. And I've customized it with my, my, my name. So it actually, I have a, a link that is zoom.us slash my slash MP Brock. And I can have anyone click on that anytime and say, hey, click there and meet me in Zoom. And it's, um, it's something that I find very useful. But you need to be very uh, conscientious about what it is that you're using Confer Zoom for um, when you're setting up your meetings. 
So um, the other thing that we recommend, or that I recommend, these are really my recommendations. I've been thinking a lot about um, it being a teacher and some of the things that I would like to have um, active in my account to be able to use. Many of the default uh, meeting settings are great, but some of them are not turned on. So um, the ones that you definitely want to be sure are on our chat, which I believe is on by default. Um, and I believe screen sharing is on by default. But file sharing and polling, I don't believe are on by default. And also annotation and whiteboard are features that add a lot of collaborative options to a Zoom meeting. Um, so those can be enabled in the settings and you would need to enable those to be able to do the things that I'm gonna show you when we get to the advanced section. And I just wanna point out that I'm seeing several messages come directly to me as private messages. If you could, um, share your questions in the chat when we get to the Q&A breaks, that would be really helpful. In the advanced section of the um, meeting settings in, in zoom.us, when you're setting up your account, there's one option that enables breakout rooms. So if you are in a Zoom meeting that you're hosting and you're looking for the button that says breakout rooms that I'm gonna refer to later and it's not there, and if polls are not, you can't see the poll feature in the toolbar, it means that you haven't turned those on in your account settings. So um, that's definitely something that, that you wanna be sure that you do when you get your account set up. Okay, so a couple of options for setting up meetings for your virtual class. Um, this first option is not one that uses Canvas. Um, and it's one that, that I've used in my own teaching, so I did wanna share it. Um, what I've done for some of my courses is I've created a single remote classroom link, basically. So it's a reoccurring meeting that I set up in my Zoom account at zoom.us, not inside of Canvas. And um, I would basically call that meeting something like virtual office and the name of the course. And then I would, in my course, link out to it and just have a button that says meet in Zoom. The downside, or maybe not a downside, something that I need to caution you about if you do use this, is that it is a meeting that can be accessed by, any time, by anyone at any time who has access to it. So I personally don't recommend using like your personal URL there because if you're likely to give that out to a colleague or you know use it for a meeting outside of your course or use it in all of your courses, you could be meeting with um, Carlos, one of your students in, in one section and then you could have a colleague click on that link or a student in another section click on it. So that's something to be aware of. The other option is to use ConverZoom through Canvas, and that's a great option as well. It's different and it ha adds more functionality. Um, it's, it is it's only available to you if your college has set up the ConverZoom integration in Canvas, so that has to be done by your Canvas administrator. Um, so if you go into your Canvas um, instance and you do not see an option for ConverZoom in your course menu, the first thing you should do is click on settings and be, see if it is in the one of the options that's disabled and you can re-enable it in the settings area. Um, and if, if you're having trouble just finding out if it's enabled, reach out to your local contacts and ask them. But once it's enabled in your Canvas instance, you can use that to set up meetings um, in, for your course. It's easy to use um, and it's easy to set up actually meetings for several weeks at a time or an entire course. Um, and what you would do and what your students would do to join those meetings is, is simply log into Canvas, click on Confer Zoom, and then click the join button. Um, and when an event is just about to happen, it gets moved up to the top. I don't know if you can see that in the screenshot, but it's pretty easy to use. And this is a great way to actually track the attendance of who was actually at your meeting, if that's something that is important to you. I didn't point this out, but I have support guides listed at the bottom of most slides. Again, these slides were designed to be uh, helpful resources for you after the session today. And um, Helen and Autumn have been sharing the link to the slides in the chat, so they are available to you. And so you can get those hot links and you know, if you're someone who wants to start clicking around on things now, you can do that, um, or you can stay focused on, on what we're saying here in the Zoom session. 
You should know that live caption services are available for Confer Zoom when there's a student participating in the class who needs hearing support. It's easy to request the live captions, but they do need to be requested at least five days in advance. Um, and Donna, I don't know if you've changed that um, time period at all, given the, um, the situation that we are in now. <laughs> If you do. Uh, no, it's, it's still the same requirement because we have to get that information and get the captioning company um, availability. If someone has a class that requires closed caption, and that would be when you have a student requiring the services who is attending live, and if you are uh, not given the five-day notice, say you're just notified, I have a student who will be in your class tomorrow and they have to have captions, you can certainly submit your request and let us know it was a quick turnaround or you know a, a last minute notification then we can work with our captioner to see if he can accommodate um, if you do not have if you have a student who requires support but is not attending the class live audio transcript enabled in your account with a cloud recording will give you a text file which is a caption-like file that the student can use when they view the recording. Thank but we still need the five days notice. Great. So I'm going to pause here, and this is where we are going to take questions. Um, if you could take note about what I have on the second bullet point here, this is really helpful. If you have a question that you want to ask, because there's lots of things being shared in chat, if you could put a question mark in front of your message. So the very first character in what you type, make it a question mark, and we will know that that's a a question that we can address and we're going to pause for just a few moments here to ask to answer questions. Um, Donna, do you know if someone is teaching a foreign language, if captions can be provided in a foreign language? Uh, no, we don't have foreign language available at this time. Okay, thank you. And let's see how, okay, how and for how long can we get the recording of how and for how long can we get the recording of this? We will have the recording of this session available next week on the cvc.edu webpage that uh, promoted these webinars. And we don't have any plans to take it down. <laughs> how do I make the Zoom window not full screen? Try double clicking on it and that should take care of that problem. Where do I request CC for my hard of hearing student who has an interpreter? We just covered that on a previous slide. There is a form that is linked to that slide and it'll take you right to that page and you can fill out that request five days in advance of your session. I'm not clear how students access the meeting without an account. Karen, it's pretty simple. It's the exact same way you did here. Um, you just click on the link and it opens. I don't know of an easier way to explain that. <laughs> I don't see Confer Zoom on Canvas, but I do have Confer Now. Are they similar products? That's one for you, Donna. Uh, they are the same. Confer Now was the labeling we had for the colleges that were early adopters when we were using Blackboard, but it is the same as Confer Zoom. And Donna, this is Autumn. There's a question from Danita. I have had my Confer Zoom account for years, but I don't know how to upgrade it to Zoom Pro to use webinars. So I just want to answer part of that. I, I would think about using webinar versus meeting, and if, you, if that's really what you want to do, because webinar has limited uh, interaction with the attendees, with the participants. So if you're holding a class session, if you're trying to use Zoom to replace your face-to-face -face course se section, um, you probably want to use meeting because students can um, interact with you more directly. Wouldn't you say so, Michelle? And I would add in, this is Donna, um, the webinar licenses, we do not have the volume that would give everybody a license. They are basically um, reserved for the system-wide meetings such as Michelle does and the Chancellor's Office does. So a meeting is what faculty should be using. Okay. Thank you. And we have a question here. How can I take attendance via Zoom? You can't actually, well, you can 
if you wanted to look at the, the participants window, that is one way to do that. You could take a screenshot of the participants window, but if you use the con confer zoom integration in canvas that allows for you to track attendance, it'll show it in canvas later. So you don't have to worry about that when you're in confer zoom, you can pay more attention um, and be present for your students. I have a number of classes. Can this be set up so that students from multiple classes can enter the same confer Zoom link? Zoom link? Donna, what's your suggestion for that? When you schedule a class um, in your course in Canvas, it's open for all of the students in that course to join. If you want to invite students from other courses, there is a process to capture the correct link inside Canvas and then you can post it wherever you communicate with students in the other courses and they can all join the same room. And by using that link, it also tracks the attendance for everyone there. If you go to our support site where Michelle referenced earlier on the slides under the Canvas instructor guide, our articles about most everything you'd wanna know about Confer Zoom and Canvas and look for the article that's labeled, I believe it's called invite guests and students from other courses and it will take you through the steps. Oh, that's helpful. I didn't know about that. Okay, I'm going to have to apologize now. I know there are a lot of questions, um, but it's already 25 after, so I'm going to keep going forward. And if there are any questions that um, Donna or anyone else can answer in the chat, feel free to do so. I um, think several of them are going to be answered in your upcoming. Um, okay, great. Yeah. Good. So we're going to move forward. We're now move. It's still a couple more basic slides, but we're now moving into facilitating your your virtual class session. Um, a moment ago, I mentioned that you can have live captioning for your course um, if you have a student who requires it as an accommodation and you make that request five days in advance. What will happen on when you start the Zoom session is that a, a person will, it's actually a person who does the, that typing. It's really important to know that. So you're going to have a person join as a participant and that person will probably reach out to you in the chat and ask you to give them um, a, permissions to caption or permission to type. And all you need to do there is click on the CC in the toolbar. And then as the screenshot shows here and the instructions on the page show, you just say, you just um, go ahead and assign a participant to type and, and give that person permission. It's pretty easy to do, but it's helpful to know that that's, that's gonna happen if you do have a captioner join you. I also want to just really encourage everyone to, to take a step back and um, kind of think about the importance of having a mindset when you're holding a Zoom session with students. Students are going to be nervous um, and you probably are going to be nervous too. I've been doing this a long time and I get really nervous every time I do a Zoom session. So um, I think it's important to start with just setting the tone, uh, be encouraging. It, I, I really encourage you to ask your students to enable their webcams, but also respect their decision if they don't want to. Um, it might not be appropriate for them to, or maybe they just don't feel comfortable doing that. Uh, ask them how their day is going or start with a fun icebreaker prompt, have them use the chat to, to answer. Uh, speak slowly and clearly. Oh, and by the way, if it's a small class, have them use their microphones. It, it doesn't get quite so crazy. We have a lot of people in this meeting, which is, we're up to 233 now, which is why we're controlling the audio so closely. Um, yeah, and speak slowly and clearly. Uh, encourage multiple ways to participate. I'm going to model this in just a little bit when we get to our last question period but have them uh, use the raise hand feature if they wanna actually ask a question with their microphone. And you can find that right now if you're, if you're curious. If you click on the participants button, you'll see an option at the bottom to raise your hand. We're just gonna ignore that if you do it right now, but um, you can try it out if you'd like. And then one of our co-hosts can, can put, the, put your hand down in a bit. They can also put a uh, type in the chat um, and it's a good practice to encourage them to put a question mark before what they say, because that chat can also be used as a very dynamic and helpful back channel for students to converse with each other. And that helps you to know when there's something that you need to answer. Stop intermittently and ask for questions. Um, try something new each time, push yourselves. There's a lot to learn and a lot to experiment with. And expect yourself to make mistakes. We're human and there's a learning curve with all of this. So don't go into your first session thinking that you're going to be a rock star and you're not going to screw something up because you will. And that's okay. You're just going to learn from it and keep going. I also have some basic tips for great video 
um, yes, first of all, turn on your webcam, be present, have your students be able to see your smiling face. And when you do that, use frontal lighting. Don't sit in a room where you have a, a light source behind you because then you're gonna appear in shadow. Um, so give that some thought. And also be aware of what's behind you. Um, you know, if you, if you have kind of a personal setting behind you, sometimes that can be a great way for, for students to kind of just see you in maybe a non-academic setting or if you're outside somewhere. Um, but you can also, you want to be mindful of what's behind you, right? Because it might share a little too much about you also. So just give some thought to that. Um, and a microphone is important. I really like to just use a, a, a set of earbuds that has a built-in mic. It's, it, it filters out some of the background noise. And a moment ago I said, you know, go outside. That may be a very bad idea depending on what environment you're in, or particularly if it's windy. So be mindful of those things. Check in with your students and ask if they can hear you okay. Um, and be real. Again, like I just said a moment ago, you're gonna make mistakes, you're just human. Don't try to be perfect. Uh, you know, be, be, try to be comfortable and it, it does get easier. I know it feels super weird to talk to a webcam. It's such a weird feeling, um, but it, it really does get better with time. So keep doing it. Now, a couple of the features that you've already seen in Zoom since you've been here as participants. First is the chat feature, which is, can be used as a back channel for student-to-student -student interactions. If you go into your uh, Zoom settings, you can enable private messaging, which would allow students to message each other, each other. For some instructors, they're really not comfortable with that, but it can be really helpful because it gives students a way to lean on each other and say, hey, did you understand that? Was it just me? Or uh, you know, where do, where do we get that link? Maybe some of the questions they may not be, they may not want to feel comfortable asking in the group, they can kind of ask of each other. So that's something that I would enable as an instructor. Um, of course, student to instructor interactions for the questions, as has been noted. It's a great way to share links also. So when you're talking about a topic, if students know of a current event or some resource that really augments what it is that you're talking about, encourage them to share those links. There's also an option to share files in the chat. Uh, you should see that enabled in our chat here. That is something that you do need to turn on in your account settings. And then the participants feature, um, when you are the host, you'll be able to use it to show a list of who's present and students will also be able to see a list of those folks. Uh, students can rename themselves. You can actually try that out, try that out if you want to right now um, by clicking on, I think, it's at the end of your name in the participant option, you can, you can adjust your name. So that can be helpful. Um, it also shows on my side whether or not the participant's mic is enabled and their webcam is enabled. So it helps you to kind of control some of those things. Um, and at the very bottom, there's an option to mute all. And that's basically what we used as you all came in today. And our, my, my co-hosts are continuing to mute people as they come in. Um, but I take that back, I forgot. We had the option, which is not selected in my example. If you have a big group, you may wanna select mute participants on entry and that can be helpful. It may not be needed though, it depends on the size of your meeting. So just give that some thought. When it comes to sharing your screen, we've disabled this for uh, from you right now just because we didn't want a lot of different people sharing screen But we're going to enable in just a little bit and you can try it out yourself It's just, it's really simple. It's as simple as clicking the green share icon in the zoom toolbar And then you'll see a window pop up and you'll have lots of options Depending it, it might be too many options if you're like me and you have lots of windows and applications open But it will show a thumbnail of every application and browser window and so you click the one you want to share, or you can click your, um, your desktop or uh, uh, the whole screen, and it'll just share everything that's on your screen. That's up to you to play around with, and I encourage you to just jump in a Zoom session on your own and, and, and see how that works to get familiar with it. There is one little tip. If you plan to share something with sound, which I am planning to share, and I just realized right now, I forgot to click that option. So I'm gonna have to um, do it again when I get to my video and it's not a big deal. But there's a little option at the bottom of the window where you choose, um, 
what it is you want to share. It says share computer sound. And if you don't click there, then the, the video sound isn't going to relay very well. Uh, and then when you're done, you click on stop share. And that's basically how that works. Um, <clears throat> so you can allow uh, students to share or not. This is the feature someone asked earlier. How do you turn that feature off? Uh, and this is exactly what I did at the start of the meeting before we started recording. Um, if you click on the little carrot or the arrow next to the share button, you will see an option that um, it, it's the advanced share options that you want to select. And then it says who can share and you can select all participants or only host. And recording is as simple as clicking a button also. Um, you click record and then you can pause and stop recording as needed and after you have finished your session you will get an email that will contain a link to your recording. It will also include the option to download the mp4 file and it will show an interactive transcript with your recording. This is what it looks like. This is called the cloud recording. Um, I believe cloud recordings are saved for one year. So if you're recording something that you think you need for longer than that time, you are going to have to download it and then upload it elsewhere like 3C Media and have it captioned and then you can embed it back in your, in your course. Questions about the basics and we're running really tight on time. So I'm kind of tempted to Yeah, to I think you should just keep going so they can have a chance to practice because a lot yeah. of the questions are about how do I do this. And when you let them practice, they'll, they'll answer their own questions. Okay, okay. I'm going to keep going here. Uh, one of the advanced features that we used to start was polls. Um, they're a great tool for keeping a session interactive. They can be used for assessments, you know, kind of knowledge checks, or maybe at the end of the session to see if students really learned what you hoped they were going to learn in that session. Gather group opinions about topics. There are only two basic question types that can be asked, though. Questions that require a single answer, and then uh, questions that allow multiple answers to be selected. And that was the type that you all, um, number two is the, the type that I had set up for my poll. Um, and Again, that just has to be enabled in your account settings, Oops. in your account settings. And I'll, I'll give you one little tip. You set up your meeting and then you go back, you, you log into zoom.us and click on the meeting. And at the bottom of that window, you'll see the option to add a poll. So again, you, you set up the meeting, you go into zoom.us, find the meeting in your meetings area. And at the bottom of that page, you'll say create a poll or add a poll. So you do that in the website zoom.us and then when you log into the session and you click on poll that's where you can activate the polls there's also a feature to share a whiteboard that i'm going to um i'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and then share again and show you how this works Can you folks see a whiteboard? I just see Michelle has started screen sharing, double click, but I don't see your whiteboard yet. Okay. Oops. I don't know why that didn't work. Yeah, that's a little weird thing that happens to me. It says that I have to move my windows to the front. So I don't know, if Donna, if you have a tip for that. Donna just said she had to go. Okay. Oh, she's still here though. I'm sorry, what was your question, Michelle? Do you see it now, Helen? Yes, no, yes, I see yes, the whiteboard. Yes. So this is a whiteboard. It's pretty basic functionality that you can type on. Um, you can also draw on. So I'm going to um, not spend much more time on this just to know that it is, it is there. And I can save it as an image. I just click save and it, it downloaded it to my um, to my computer. So that is an option if it's helpful to you. Um, you'll see it after you click the share icon when it's you have that window with all the different browsers and applications. One of the options is whiteboard and that's how you get to it. There's an advanced, oops, I'm not sharing, sorry. <laughs> this is the little video that I wanted to just show a clip of. There's an advanced setup workflow that I demonstrate in this video. If you have an Hi iPad, there. it'll, this video shows you how you can actually use an iPad to doodle on 
during a Zoom session. going to go ahead and um, start writing on my iPad. So of course you can um, simply use the, the, the pencil function and if you'd like, grab a different color and make some annotations. Um, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Okay. That four minute video is in the slide, so watch it and it'll walk you through what I'm showing. To do that, you need an iPad that accepts, that, that accepts a pencil, a digital pencil, and then you also um, need the pencil as well, which of course Apple doesn't like to pay, sell with the iPad. But that's something that works. Um, it'll also work just on a computer if you attach a Wacom uh, tablet and stylus. Um, that's another way to get that, that fine tuned uh, use of a whiteboard. Um, and group annotations. You can have the uh, uh, have participants annotate on any slide that you're sharing. Um, I'm going to actually show you how that works right now. This is simply a slide that I'm sharing with you. And let me go. If you follow the instructions on the slide. At the top of the screen that I'm sharing right now, you should see an option that says view options. If you click on view options and choose annotate from the drop down menu, you should be able to draw. So the prompt I have here is circle the emoji that best reflects how you are feeling. <laughs> All right, so you can see that we have a lot of people that are excited. We have some people confused, some neutral and stressed. Okay, yeah, and you can see how that can get messy with a really big group, right? But um, that's basically how it works. And now I need to go in and, let's see, how do I clear my annotations? That's something I didn't try out here. It should be up in that top menu. Yeah, I see disable annotation. Eraser, double click eraser. There's no eraser. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Clear. Clear all drawings. There we go. It was in a different spot. Um, anyway, see, you learn as you go. So, this video here shows you how to set up breakout rooms. And we're going to do a breakout room activity in just a second. But I really recommend watching this video because it's going to show you some of the stuff that I can't show you because I can't share my side of the screen, if that makes sense. Um, so the way it works is when you're ready to do breakout rooms, you click on the option in your Zoom chat for breakout rooms and you basically um, create automatic, choose automatic or manually. I like the automatic option, particularly for a group of this size and select create rooms and it'll basically disperse the participants into breakout rooms. It's a great way to have small group interactions um, and really kind of work in some active learning into your Zoom session. So we're going to try a breakout room activity. I'm going to put a link in the chat right now that will take you to a Google Doc. It's the tiny.cc slash um, teaching. And if you could click on that and open the Google Doc, it'll look just like the one on the screen here. It's going to have instructions for your activity. So please go ahead and open that Google Doc. And on my end, I'm going to go ahead, folks, and start setting up the breakout rooms. If you read those instructions, though, let's just take a briefly a look at them together. Um, hopefully have that doc open. It says, once you're in a breakout room, follow these instructions, identify a timekeeper, then give each person about three minutes to complete one of the following tasks, help each other out. So apply what you've learned. Uh, and if you're on a mobile device, you may not have full functionality. So let us know how that goes. The three different tasks are number one, a basic screen share, try out screen sharing. Number two, try out the collaborative um, whiteboard. So the group annotation. And number three, set a virtual background. I didn't show you how to do that, but if you follow the steps um, and if you have the minimum system requirements, it should let you do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start 
organizing the breakout rooms here. While you're doing that, Michelle, remember to enable screen sharing. Oh, thank you. Yes. And I will just, while she's doing that, I will just mention to everyone to remind you, all three people in your breakout room aren't going to do all three tasks. There unfortunately isn't time for that. So each person will pick one task and practice with that and you all can help each other, but you won't have time to do all three tasks for all three people. Okay, and it's, uh, it's, I have automatic set up on my side and it's saying because of the number of people, there'll be three to four people in each room. So let's see if I can change that to, oops, someone just started. If you couldn't sharing. find the Google Doc, it's <laughs> highly likely that somebody else in your group will have it. So hopefully you won't get in a group of four people that all couldn't find the doc. So don't panic if you don't have the Google Doc, but it would be really good if you can click on the link and, and find it. Okay, so momentarily you're gonna be in your breakout rooms and you're, you should receive an invitation to join the room. Yes, I see a, a box on my screen that says the host is inviting you to join breakout room and then it has the breakout room and the number. And right. you want us to go ahead and do it? Yeah, so go ahead and join your breakout room and you'll get a notification from me when I'm about to close them. Okay, all right, see you, see you on the other side. I really recommend doing this because it's a great way to learn. If there's anyone here who didn't get an invitation to a breakout room, let me know. You all should have gotten one. You did not get one. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know what to do about that. And Wonder Woman said she got one but could not get in. Oh, good, you found the link. What happened when you tried to get in, Wonder Woman? I love your name, by the way. You were kicked out of the group. Oh no. And you don't have that invitation again? Hmm. Let's see. Okay. I think I'm figuring out how to solve this problem. Hold on. You should have just got another invitation. I'm gonna do the same for some other folks who look like they're unassigned. You can't get into room 49. Are you on a mobile device, Kathy? On a computer. Hmm. I see you listed as a member of 49, but it says not joined. I'm going to move, try to see, I move you to another room and see if that helps.
Hmm. Looks like there's more than one person having some trouble. It's interesting. Well, I tell you what, for those of you who are in this room with me, you could try out the same features. Go ahead and try sharing your screen. You can turn on your, your microphone. If you want, we've still got about six, eight minutes left. If you disable your mic and let me know that you're there and you want to try out one of the um, options, the tasks, we can do it here together. I'm going to pop over to one of the breakout rooms. Um, I'm getting a request for help. We were supposed to give each person three minutes. So. We're trying to do it in a hurry. Um. Oh, you could like, if you click on join breakout room again, you can go back to the break. Okay, so you want to do that, Araceli?
Michelle, were you uh, talking to all of us? Are you trying to tell me I'm muted? <laughs> uh, yeah, you've been muted. <laughs> yeah, so um, I just said that I clicked close breakout room. So anyone still in a breakout room was seeing a notification at that time that said the breakout rooms will close in one minute. So now that's everyone's prompt to come back to the, the main session. So I can tell you, well, I'll wait until everybody comes back. Only about 200 to go. <laughs> I know, huh? It's crazy. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, we were just in virtual world. Darn it. <laughs> oh. You like that virtual background option. So for those of you who, um, I, I, I popped into one room and it was, I had a few people in there who, who didn't know they were supposed to have the Google Doc open. So that's a lesson learned to be sure that folks know to open the Google Doc with a group this big, it it's, it's, can be challenging. Um, but those instructions, getting those instructions to participants before they go in the breakout room is really helpful because once they're in the room, you can only pop into one room at a time. I saw someone say, what happened to the host? Well, I can't be in 60 breakout rooms at the same time. It's just for the students to interact. But the instructor can actually pop around to the different rooms. And if you're in a breakout room, you can ask for help. And if you do that, then I or the host gets a notification saying, Breakout room 46 needs some help. And you can click there and it'll pop you right into that room. So it can be really effective. And obviously, if we didn't have so many people here today, I'd have much fewer groups and I could spread, spread, my, you know, spread myself around a little bit better, so to speak. Um, but breakout rooms are, are, I think, great. We had many people, not many, but several people here who saw the invitation to join the room, but for some reason weren't able to get in. And I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, I could see on my side, uh, let me actually show you what I saw. I know I'm going a bit over time here, but I think this might be helpful. Oh, actually, I don't think I can find it right now. Forget it. We're out of time. So I'm going to see if we have additional questions. I'm going to go back over to my Google Slides here. And I'm sure you have plenty of takeaways from that. I'm sorry if it didn't work right for you. Um, so questions about the advanced features. It is 4 o'clock. And I know that, that we're supposed to stop here, but if there is an interest in, um, in staying on, I can stay on and try to answer a few questions on my own. Um, and if you'd like to ask a question by unmuting yourself, you're welcome to do that. I'd like to invite you to use the participant window to raise your hand, and that way I can um, call upon you if you want to ask a question with your microphone. And Michelle, can I just make a suggestion before you start answering questions, before people have to leave at four? I would highly recommend you get together with a couple of colleagues at your campus and get into Zoom together. You know, if you're, if you're a little nervous about doing it with students for the first time, set up some Zoom sessions with your colleagues, just, you know, 15 minutes to kind of get in there and play with it and, and work out the troubleshooting. And then the other thing you can do is for your class, you could make the first Zoom session um, an optional extra credit and let your students know, hey, we're figuring out this together. There, you know, there are going to be issues that we have to work out and, and things that we'll learn. So come learn with me and, and, and get some extra credit. And that way it's low stakes and it's fun and uh, it encourages everybody to experiment. I'm so glad you said that because I made a mental note of myself to say the exact same thing as a suggestion and I knew I would forget. So. Great minds. Um, so Alicia, I'm going to answer your question verbally because I can't type and speak at the same time. But Alicia's asked, she said she couldn't get the virtual background to work. If you go back um, into the, the confer guides and search for virtual background, 
there are system requirements that you have to meet. And it's a, both a hardware requirement and it's an operating system requirement. And so that might be why it's not working on your end. So check that out. Um, can this be asynchronous? Zoom is a synchronous interaction tool. Um, the chat is asynchronous, right? I mean, it could be synchronous, asynchronous. Um, but when you ask that question, it's designed to be synchronous. But if you yourself are alone in Zoom, you can use it to record your screen. So if that's what you're asking in your question, um, it can definitely be used to create asynchronous uh, video content. And that is something that some people do use it for today, do use it for, for their classes. Autumn, could you put the link for the slides in the chat again? Um, yes, I, I'm going to put that in right now. And then I'm also going to put the link to where the um, recordings will be posted. Thank you. And Sherry, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question? Um, <clears throat> yeah, what's the difference again between confer Zoom and Zoom? So the difference between confer Zoom and Zoom, it's the same product. See, confer Zoom is the white labeled version of Zoom that's available only for California Community College faculty and staff. So yeah. if you were to go out to zoom.us and say, oh, I'm going to create an account, it's going to generate a free account for you, which it'll work for some things, but you won't be able to do the Canvas integration. And there'll be a, a smaller cap on the number of people. I think it only allows meetings up to 30 minutes. So there's a lot of limitations on that free account. If you go into con uh, go through Confer Zoom and request your account, you get a free pro account. So you'd have to pay for that through Zoom. And it's free for you as a faculty member or staff of our system. Okay, so I'm the one who asked the question early on. I teach at San Francisco State. So I, and I wanna do a Zoom. I have to do a regular Zoom for San Francisco State? Yeah, but San Francisco State, I believe actually has their, I think the CSU system has their own license for Zoom. So inquire there and you should be able to get your own account for, through that institution. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Some folks are asking about how you entered the breakout rooms as the, as the teacher facilitator. Yeah, and that's the part that it's so hard to explain. Um, but uh, if, if you actually watch that video that I have embedded on the slide, it'll show you kind of the back, back behind the scenes view of what the, the host sees and it's really helpful. But um, I, had a, I had a scroll after the, the breakout rooms were, were created, I had a screen that said breakout room one, breakout room two, breakout room three, all the way up through 60 something. And I could see who was in each one. Um, there were also a group of people unassigned. And those are the people that for some reason weren't able to get in. I tried reassigning them, but it didn't work for some folks. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. It's, it's a question that I'd love to get answered, but I don't know right now. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I was going to ask, have someone else who has a hand up speak. Did, is that I don't know who just started. I have a question, uh, Brian Bobbitt. Okay, Brian. So I just posted this too. I wrote it. So if if the if I'm understanding correctly, if Confer Zoom is available for community college instructors, that also includes not just full time faculty, but also adjunct faculty, right? I'm adjunct. It does faculty. absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah. I have I have a question. Hello, I needed to. Um, I'm gonna use GroupWorks, and I I need to be. Uh, able to do the breakout uh, groups, right? So uh, if I if I click on participants, I get all the names. From there, I put them into groups. Nope. Uh, uh, what you need to do is you need to go into your meeting settings at zoom.us after mm -hmm. your account's created. But I have the Confair Zoom on Canvas. Yeah, hold on a second. So what you do at zoom.us mm -hmm. connects into Canvas. The two yeah. created, okay? So you have to go into your meeting settings. It's on an e earlier slide in our presentation. And yeah. you can enable breakout rooms. Oh, okay. Once you enable that, and if you're in a Zoom session, you'll have a button right on your toolbar that says breakout rooms. And you click there. It's that simple. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yeah, if you watch the, um, the video also on the breakout room slide, it can be... It, it's I was playing last night with the Zoom. This is the first time I'm going to use this for live. Because I know how to use Canvas, but I don't know how to do the Zoom. So um, I played around with that last night, and it took me to a conference too. But I didn't check all of this. I didn't know about breakout. 
Okay. Yeah. So you won't see that feature though until you turn it on in your at the account level. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank so um, Kristen Hyatt, do you have a question that you'd like to ask? I have a question, but I'm Ellen Rosen. Okay, Ellen, go ahead. Um, I am wondering how we can have access to this uh, this webinar or whatever this is after it's over, so that we can use the links. Absolutely. Um, so we I, we already gave you the slides, so all the links are in the slides. You have that now. I have um, it where? Um, in well, the chat. We posted the link to the the slides in the chat you want me to post that again yeah that would be great oh yeah i never saw that i'm not reading the chat all the time so autumn bell just posted the link to today's slides the archive of today's webinar will be posted next week on the same cvc.edu page where this webinar was promoted um, and uh, autumn if you could put that link in the chat too it would be helpful and we encourage you to share the archive and you can um, uh, the chat ahead the chat transcript will be saved there as well. <clears throat> yes, and all the questions that we didn't get to answer. <laughs> I oh, do hope a lot of the questions were answered through the, through the um, event, the session though. Can you go somewhere and do a sort of a practice session? Is there yeah, a... actually you can do that yourself. Once you have your own account, just start a meeting. With other people or just- Well, you, you'll start it alone. But um, as Autumn suggested, set up a meeting and get some colleagues and say, hey, can you join me in Zoom today at three o'clock and give them the link. You can email the link to them. Okay. Um, as long as you don't do it through Canvas. If you do it through Canvas, then only your students can get to the, into those oh. meetings. If you do okay. it through zoom.us and share that link with your colleagues, have them join you. And that way you'll have the host controls, they'll be participants and you can kind of try some things out. Okay. Yeah, it's a really great way to learn. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, the question is, how do I go, how do I show my PowerPoint? So to share a PowerPoint, you use screen share. So um, that's, that's something that you can actually try out alone in a, in a Zoom room, actually. Or if you have another person, just to confirm that it, it's show, shareable. But when you go into, when you click on screen share, you can choose any application that you have open. So if you have a PowerPoint open, you click PowerPoint and that will share the PowerPoint. Thank you, very helpful. Try I it out in advance though, because some PowerPoint can be a little tricky to share. Thank yes. you. So I do have a question. Yes. And that is that I last week went ahead and went into um, Zoom to set up for this week to prepare my students. And so I was, I did use my college email, but it set up a 40 minute limitation because it wasn't on the, the, on the pro. And so since I've gone in that during this session to the CCC and um, went in by my college email but it's still sending me back to the original zoom that i generated and so it's telling me that i have limited time of 40 minutes so what do i need to do you need to report that to confer to the okay. confer zoom folks unfortunately they're going to have to go in and, and merge your accounts i think that's what has to happen on the behind the scenes that's not something i can help with sorry okay yeah so you want to submit a, a request to their support okay there's only a limit on the free Zoom accounts. That's what, I'm sorry, I didn't get, catch the person's name who was just speaking. So you won't be limited to 40 minutes if you're in a Confer Zoom, which is an upgraded pro account, okay? Keep in mind, they're so overwhelmed that they may not respond to you immediately. So just know they're, they're working on stuff. They're not ignoring you. So yeah. um, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So if I teach at multiple um, community colleges, I know I have to put in my college email to get different accounts, but you're saying that both of them should be confer Zoom, even if the other college on Canvas, it just lists it as Zoom. Are, you te are they all California community colleges? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know why it would just say Zoom if they should be using a confer Zoom integration. 
Um, so the best I can tell you is that, yes, it, it should be, if you're using it in Canvas, it's any integration into Canvas is going to look for the email that you're using in Canvas, which is why you need the Zoom account to match it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if, if you get held up, again, conferzoom.org, and it's their, their support folks. Um, actually, let me give you the, the email address. I'm not going to give you the website. Support at cccteconnect.org? Yes. I posted in there at 412, so if you scroll up, you can see it. And then, like, the questions about using it on a cell phone or what features are available on the mobile versus regular, I put the link to the Confer Zoom guides. So you can go there, and um, they have guides about using it on a webinar, using it on a desktop, using it on a mobile. So that, that might be a good place to start. And don't forget, you can just do a Google search with your question, and either the Zoom results will come up, or another institution will have created a document about it, and you can use that as help. So just you know, type your question in Google and see what kind of resources you get. Yeah, that's how I found that great breakout room video that I shared with you all. It's, a, it's yeah, kind of just stepping into social sharing and, and seeking out help resources can be very helpful. Can I ask one question? Just, it's very simple. Uh, do we have to tell the students to just press um, confer Zoom and then they will get into class at 7 p.m.? If you're using the confer Zoom integration in Canvas and you yeah. set up the meetings that way, then yes, they just click on confer Zoom and they're at the time of the meeting, they'll see a button there that says happening now or something like that and a button that says join. And then we can also give them a link for the students that they don't use Canvas? You have students that don't use Canvas? Well, I don't know if all of them will go and no. link in on Canvas. I would have them go through Canvas. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. And I already tried to train them, but I don't know. Okay, well, thank They'll you. They'll get the hang of it. Keep, <laughs> keep, keep at it. They'll get the hang of it. Okay. Okay, can I think I we're, okay, we're going to take one more question, and then we're going to wrap up. Can I though. ask my question now, or somebody else is in the line? Yeah, and I'm sorry. I can't tell who's speaking, but you, you've got the mic. Go for it. Uh, I'm Nanda. And my question is, I'm a math instructor, and I have to write the equations and all that. So how I can do it uh, using the paper? Can we make some document camera? I have iPad, iPhone, and the that is screen laptop. Yeah, if you go to the, the slide in the presentation that says advanced uh, whiteboard option, it shows you how to use an iPad with a, di with a digital pencil, like an, an Apple pencil, or you could use a Logitech crayon and annotate on your whiteboard while you're in the session, or annotate on your iPad. And that's, that's the best solution for you. Uh, you said advanced white, whiteboard? I'm sorry? What did you say? I should go in the slide that is showing advanced whiteboard? Yes, let me find it for you. Slide is, 29. Thank you. Slide 29 in our slide deck. And you'll find a video there. It's a four minute video that walks you through how to do it. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, folks, we're going to have to call it a day. Um, thank you so much. I know that we didn't get everyone's questions answered and I'm, I'm, I apologize for that. I really recommend, I re there's so many of your peers in the same boat. And right now, you know way more than a lot of people you work with. So if you can be brave, set up a meeting and say, hey, join me in Zoom, you can try out all these questions that you have and figure out if what you want to do is working. And it's going to really help them learn and understand what to do too. So uh, please lean on your peers. We're all in this together. We're a community. And the more we support each other, the better off we are in the end. So thank you so much. And thank you for doing all you're doing to support our students through this, um, this stressful time. Go wash your hands, stay clean, and, and be well. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much.